of the magic dragon lived by the she and frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Honolulu. Little Jackie Paper loved that rascal Puff and brought him strings and sealing wax and other fancy stuff. Puff the magic dragon lived by the she and frolicked in the autumn mist in the land called Honolulu. Puff the magic dragon lived by the she and frolicked in the autumn mist in the land called Honolulu. Puff, puff. Hey, Salmon Skins, how you doing? How's everyone doing? How's everyone feeling in their skins today? People feeling comfortable in their skins? Uh, speaking of sh- skins, uh, that was the wonderful Sean Connery there, of course, and his fantastic rendition of Puff the Magic Dragon. Uh, thank you, Sean, for letting me use your version of that song. Uh, I don't know if you remember... There was a movie from the 90s, uh, I'm going to say 96-ish, um, called Dragonheart, where, <clears throat> excuse me, where Sean Connery played the last dragon. Sean Connery played the last dragon. Uh, I can't remember the dragon's name. Brendan, probably, or something like that. Billy. Probably was something like Dennis. Dennis the dragon. Uh, Dennis Quaid uh, was in the movie as well, because I guess they couldn't get someone else. Uh, I know, I like Dennis Quaid. But yeah, Sean Connery played a dragon. He played a CGI dragon in that with a Scottish accent. Did he come from Scotland? No. It never really came up in the movie. I was kind of disappointed. I was like, I thought it was going to be like a throwaway line. You know, I grew up in uh, Edinburgh as a young dragon, learning how to breed fire. I worked in the circus for a time. Uh, but no, it was none of that. But he recorded Puff the Magic Dragon as a sort of a tie-in because I thought the movie was going to be huge and there's going to be a whole lot of sequels. Dragon Heart 2, uh, Dragon Harder, A Good Day to, to Dragon Hard um, and Live Free or Dragon Hard. And those movies didn't materialize because the movie, I mean, it was it was a mild success. It was It was okay. I mean... At the time, it was like, this is the most unbelievable CGI you'll ever see. And uh, it was a lot of hype around it. And he recorded Puff the Magic Dragon as a sort of a tie-in to the movie. But then he found out that there was a little bit of a drug reference going on there. Puff the Magic Dragon. Uh, Let's just say it's code. I don't know if you remember a couple episodes ago, some of the cool kids on the corner were talking about buggies and the like. Uh, drug talk, drug code. So apparently Puff the Magic Dragon is about smoking the ganja, smoking the reefer man, um, playing the chuns man, Jamaica. That's the terrible, terrible accent. Uh, I hope I haven't been cancelled and I hope you can still hear me. So yeah, when it, when he found out, he was he was livid. He was absolutely livid. But then Sean Connery is, he's a strange man. He's, you know, he's retired now. Um, Funny thing about Sean Connery is, I mean, he made a lot of movies, uh, put in a lot of great performances, won an Oscar for The Untouchables, where he kind of attempted to change his accent just a little bit, uh, where he plays an Irish cop. But I guess they felt, you know, well, Scottish, Irish. I don't know why they couldn't have had him be a Scottish cop, but I guess he had to be an Irish cop because it was Chicago, uh, or as the Irish people call it, Chicago. Because he liked to fuck an in there for no apparent reason. And he was playing uh, Malone. And he sh- he said he had lines like, Remember what we talked about now? And I was like, Is th- is what? And there was an- like, there's another guy in it who is actually doing the sort of American person doing an Irish accent thing. He's like, Oh, Jimmy, you're out of your mind. You're out of your fucking mind, Jimmy. Um, he just sounds like my dad when he's mad. Uh, but Sean, he turned down a lot of successful movies. Would they have been successful if he was in them? 
Some of them, yes, absolutely. Some of them, I'm not so sure. Like the most famous one that I think a lot of people know, uh, maybe you don't. Well, here's a bit of knowledge for you, a bit of movie knowledge. I got a lot of that. Uh, the Lord of the Rings, little, little, the little film series that could. Uh, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of these movies, fantasy movies. Uh, they were big at the time, still big now. Uh, I watch the extended cuts with my friend Kevin McGarren once a year or maybe twice a year. I don't know. Um, I think once every 18 months or something. Seems about right for me. But uh, Sean Connery was offered the role of Gandalf. Uh, I know, it's hard to imagine anyone else playing Gandalf apart from Ian McKellen. He does such an amazing job. Like, I, I, Ian McKellen should have won the Oscar. Uh, I, I think, I, was he nominated? It was kind of like a sort of a Obi-Wan Kenobi kind of thing. Because... Star Wars won a lot of technical Oscars, and deservedly so. And Alec Guinness, hmm, uh, these aren't the droids you're looking for. He was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. I think that's just because, you know, he's obviously a big, a big style, big name actor at the time, and had been for many years. But I think Ian McKellen was nominated as well. I could be wrong, but he should have won. He should have definitely won. Can you imagine... Sean Connery in that role, you know, keep it secret, keep it safe. Um, I don't know if it, you shall not pass. I mean, I think it probably would have worked. Although, is he too Sean Connery to play um, Gandalf? And he would have retired, like he retired pretty soon afterwards. He retired like, I think he decided to make The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. And I don't know if you've seen that movie, but it's fucking awful. It was a great uh, graphic novel series by, um, what's his name, uh, Alan, Alan Moore. Um, I was like, who? Alan Watchman. Mr. Watchman, I like your cartoon series. Uh, it's a graphic novel. That's not how he talks. But uh, yeah, he did that movie instead, and it was so bad, he retired. That movie retired him. Um, but interestingly enough, when he got the script... He read it and he couldn't understand it. Um, he was like, what is this? Hobbits? What are they? Dwarves? No, dwarves are, are different characters, Mr. Connery. What? I'm confused. Is there any good golf courses near where we're shooting? Because apparently that's uh, how he chose a lot of his his, his movie roles. That movie uh, um, Rising Sun, where he plays like a, a cop in Japan solving a murder uh, in a in a boardroom with uh, Wesley Snipes. Uh, apparently he chose that because uh, there was a great golf course nearby. The other movie that he turned down because that he, he couldn't understand the script to was The Matrix, or some people call it The Matrix. Uh, who was he up for? Morpheus, of course, uh, famously played by Lawrence Fishburne. And I can't imagine anyone else in that role. And also, I can't imagine Sean Connery in 1999, in his 60s, I guess, because he's, he's pushing 90 now, I can't imagine him doing all that kung fu stuff. I can't imagine him training for months and months because they, they all trained in kung fu, uh, in gun gunplay. They, they got to fool around with their guns in a big playpen and uh, make cootsie cootsie noises and oh, you, oh, you lovely 9mm at you at you the best you the best at killing everyone and uh, he was like fuck that there's no golf courses I'm not going to train for four months I'm too old for this shit um, but like you know uh, you take what's the, what's the line you take the blue pill you wake up you forget e everything or do you take the red pill and you see how deep the rabbit hole goes? The choice is yours, Neo. No one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. Um, that would have been an, he would have made that an iconic line. That would have been in all the trailers. But no, he refused. He refused. So uh, I, I asked him. I rang his management and uh, uh, Sean Connery Inc. I asked, could we use Puff the Magic Dragon in honor of the day that's in it? For the day that's in it. It's 420, bros. It's the 20th of April. And of course, that means it's Adolf Hitler's birthday. 
So uh, people around the world like to smoke some pancakes because Hitler hated getting high. Uh, that was one of the things. I mean, people know a lot of facts about Hitler. He won ball, vegetarian, ex-painter, or failed painter, if you want to put it that way. But he also hated smoking weed. He hated being relaxed. He hated giggling. He hated watching uh, marathons of Cheech and Chong movies. Those were all reasons why World War II started. You look at your history books. You see what happens. You look. Um, and you find that it's happened. So uh, we have got uh, an email. I've got an email. It's a jury update. We're going we're gonna to talk Jerry Salmon, my father, who shaved his beard off out of boredom. Uh, he, it's going back now, so he looks like a sort of a rugged tortoise now. So he sent me a message there yesterday. And here it is. Hi, Ed. Not a lot to talk about today. COVID-19 is the number one topic as usual. The news tonight is better than usual, but I hope people don't relax too much. Like a team who think the game is won and let it slip. Now is the time to be extra vigilant. Wise words. And then, changing pace. Was watching a woman's heart concert with the RT Orchestra last night. Saw the original live in UL concert hall in the early 90s. The car park was a few hundred yards from the hall. When the concert was over, a thunderstorm broke. We were ill-prepared and got an unmerciful ducking as we ran to the car. There, There is more, but I'm not telling. Memories. And then he finishes it with, Would you please stop reading out my emails verbatim? Love, Dad. Okay, uh, from now on, I mean, you really should have opened the email with uh, that last request, and maybe I wouldn't have continued. But it's too late now. I mean, I know I am recording this and I can cut it out, but I'm not going to. So uh, that's a uh, weird story. Uh, the, the the UL, uh, which is the University of Limerick Concert Hall in the early 90s, which uh, was a different time entirely. And so they got they got pissed on by rain getting to the car. But there's more to that story that he's not telling. So I'm going to have to ring my pops. See, this is it. He's just that's his little he's got his little bait. He's got his fat little worm of a story and he's putting it on the end of his conversation line and he's casting that out into the talking pool and then he's like flicking it and I'm going, ooh, what's that? I need to know more about that story. Oh, he's a clever man. He's a clever, clever man is my papa. So guys, uh, we're going to have a little break now and then I'm going to start talking about mermaids' arses. So uh, get ready for that. And we'll see you very shortly. It's the Salmon of Knowledge, the Salmon of Knowledge, commercial break again. Here it is now. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, So I was watching Twitter, uh, watching Twitter from afar. I was in the bushes with my binoculars watching uh, a digital social media platform. Um, No, but uh, Disney Plus are streaming. They have their streaming service. I haven't got it. Because, and I'll tell you for why, because I don't think I need it. I think it's just one of those things where I'll just end up getting it and I'll just spend 12 to 14 to 48 hours trying to decide what to watch and eventually watching nothing or watching something I've seen a million times before. Now, I know it's got some good shit. I know it's got all of the good Simpsons and all of the bad Simpsons. It's got... All the Disney movies, all the Marvel movies. Hey, they're entertaining. I find them entertaining. It's got all the Star Wars movies. That's another story entirely. We won't go into that. I think, I think, I haven't checked the internet, but I think if I do check the internet, I think people have talked about Star Wars just a little bit. So maybe I could leave it out. But what I found funny was they're, they're changing it. Like one of the things they changed was, um, Oh, well, actually, I will talk Star Wars. When Disney Plus launched their streaming site, and because Disney owns Star Wars, they own Fox, they own Marvel, they own everything. They own you. Uh, Check the bottom of your foot, or there could be a tag at the back of your neck that might say 100% cotton made by Disney. Uh, If there is, I'm sorry, 
a conglomerate corporation owns your body. Um, but yeah, they, they put up Star Wars, the original Star Wars from 77, which uh, was, since was renamed Episode 4 to confuse everyone. And there's a bit in it where Greedo is talking to uh, Han, or Han, however you want to say it, uh, in Mos Eisley. And it's the infamous Han shoots first, or does Greedo shoot first, or whatever. And it's been changed numerous times. And they changed it again. And I think they're doing it to try to get people to to watch it. They're trying to create an outrage. Because there's a bit, they added a little bit where just before Greedo dies, spoiler alert, he's not a major character, Han shoots him in a cool-ass way. And he dies, but he says, McClunky. Um, And everyone's, well, what the fuck? McClunky, McClunky. And they were asking the original actor what he thought of it. And everyone was talking about it, talking about it. And it's just free publicity. It's like horrible people who say horrible things on Twitter and then people retweet their things or talk about them. And stop doing that. Ignore it. Just ignore the McClunky. That's all I'm saying. But what they've done now is they've put up movies like Splash. They have that movie Splash from like 1982 or something or 83. Tom Hanks. I think it was Tom Hanks' like first sort of uh, lead role. And it's a fantasy movie uh, directed by little Ronnie Howard from Happy Days. Uh, he'll always be little Ronnie Howard from Happy Days for me. And uh, which confused me when I was a kid because I thought Happy Days was actually made in the 50s. But no, it was made in the 70s or late 60s and set in the 50s. But I just, because everything looked foreign and old, uh, and especially American TV with that kind of American sheen. You know, they have that thing, American TV, Whenever, you, even if you see someone reporting on the news from America, they look different. They look like they're in America. They've got that cool, sexy sheen. I don't know where, I don't, I don't know what that is. I guess it's the air over there. Hey, not a great place to be right now, I guess. Um, if you are in America, I know some people are, are listening in Canada. You know, just stay the fuck away from each other for a while, and then everyone can get together. But in Splash, Daryl Hannah plays a mermaid who is a literal fish woman out of water. Tom Hanks falls in love with this mermaid. And then the heavy scene where she uh, she runs and dives into the water. There's a bit where she she appears and she's walking around and you can see her bum bum. And it's just a bum. It's just for sitting on and pooping out of. And she's walking around. There's nothing sexual about the bum. Like, it's a it's like a PG movie, I think. Or Yeah, it's a PG movie. But then she runs and she dives uh, into the ocean. And you see her bum. Uh, and what they've done is they've just got like a, a copy-paste tool and they've put her, her they put hair on her bum but they've they've basically copied and pasted her actual hair like flowing down from her head and put that over a bum and it moves weirdly it looks odd it has only drawn attention to how bad it is because everyone's sharing this little gif on a loop and they're comparing it to the original one and slowing it down where you know the basically focused trying to get attention away from the butt crack they've height they've heightened the the butt crack to such an extent that people are examining it in forensic detail and it's just gotten out of hand guys and to be honest i think disney should get off their fucking high horse because now there has been this long uh conspiracy theory hey anyone who's listening from those conspiracy guys you like this this is for you there's a conspiracy theory that disney have intentionally been trying to uh, put in like subliminal sex messages in in their movies and stuff. Now there was a rumor before about Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which is not a Disney movie, uh, but there's a scene where Jessica Rabbit falls off a car or something, and uh, some animator basically put in a few frames where she's not wearing any underpants, and that was actually true. And they had to put digitally animate underpants on her for like a couple of frames. But stuff stuff like the Lion King. Simba's all like, oh, bro, I'm so sad being a lion and my dad's dead. And he's like kicking up some dust and the dust swirls up in the air. And if you pause it just right, it says sex. 
And if you play The Lion King backwards and leave the sound on, it says sex is good. Everyone should have sex, even people who don't want to. And, you know, it's like, it's nuts. They're not doing that. But what they have done, and I've seen ads for it, I've seen an ad for it today, and I found it questionable. And what it was is they were advertising Lady and the Tramp. Now, Lady and the Tramp is an old Disney animated movie. Everyone knows, but no one has seen. Uh, I haven't seen it, and I'm not going to watch it. All I know is there's a scene where they're at the back in, in the alleyway behind an Italian restaurant, and they get the scraps of the meal, and they're like eating meatballs and he pushes the meatball over with his nose and she eats the meatball and then there's like sucking on spaghetti and they kiss because that's what dogs do dogs kiss on the lips because they're just like us and then they do it doggy style because they're just like us but like this new one is they've got like cgi dogs it's quote unquote live action even though they're all computer generated so like this whole thing is like a love story where you want two realistic looking dogs, like photo real dogs, and you're just willing them to get it on and fuck in this movie. And that is deplorable, Disney. Shame on you. Covering over the ass of a lovely looking woman who just happens to be a mermaid and then pushing your dog on dog action. Well, I won't stand for it, Disney. And I'm not going to subscribe to your Disney Plus. I have no problems with anyone else applying. No problems at all. But I don't want to apply to it. And I won't. So I haven't. Now, guys, uh, I, I was I was um, just thinking the other day, I wish I had... I th- Actually, I think I have a copy of... It's one of my favorite books of all time. It's a book that I've bought about six or seven copies of to give to people as presents. And it's Kurt Vonnegut's Cat's Cradle. Now, Cat's Cradle is uh, its basically an apocalypse book. It's about a guy who has invented uh, a chemical called Ice-9. And basically what Ice-9 does is it freezes all of the planet's water. So that's what happens. A little, one drop of it can freeze the water supply. And spoiler alert, it does. Uh, but that's just what happens. In the book, the book itself has got loads of stuff. It's got a fake religion, uh, and there's these kind of. Uh, when I read it when I was a, a teenager, I was like, "Oh yes, I get this. This is this makes sense to me," because there's one uh, particular part of it where he's talking about grand falloons, and basically, uh, what a grand falloon is is it's it's a group of people who are connected but not really it's basically a group of two or more people who imagine or or are manipulated to believe they share a connection based on some circumstance of little or no real significance like if two people are from the same town or if hey you like metallica i like metallica you know hey you like cutting the eyes out of women in magazines i like to do that um all right well maybe we can't be friends and it's you know it's this this idea that we're connected even though you know like all Liverpool fans like everyone thinks the same it's a sort of tribalism thing, but it doesn't really bring people together. It just kind of separates people into groups. Where I think these days and who knows because we're only really we're in the middle of this pandemic, but this could be a unifying thing because the entire planet is experiencing the same thing at the same time. So, I don't know. I mean, Arthur C. Clarke, the famous science fiction writer, said that when first contact happens, when aliens uh, of of intelligence get to Earth, we will be so, like, that will be such a seismic event. The whole planet will be like, oh, my God, we're not alone in the universe. And that will just change the way that people think. Now, Dan Aykroyd uh, of Ghostbusters and Crystal Skull Vodka, the cleanest vodka you can drink, apparently, according to him, he believes that, yeah, there are aliens out there and the aliens know about us. They've viewed everything and they're kind of going, mm, I don't know about these lads. They seem a little bit unhinged. Let's just leave them be. So I don't know. But if Dan Aykroyd is right, if Arthur C. Clarke is right, uh, if neither of them are right, I think this could be possibly... I'm talking to Jerry, he was kind of saying maybe at the end of this people might just take stock 
we might start doing things a little bit differently. Who knows? We're going to have to see. Obviously, a lot of people are hurting and a lot of people are having a bad time. God, I've gotten so serious at the end here. It's just terrible. So, look, I'm going to do, uh, we're going to we're going to have a song to sing us out from uh, a local singer here in Dublin. Now, I've heard this man uh, many times. He's called uh, uh, Brendan Blowhart. That's his um, stage name, I guess. Uh, no one's called Mr. Blowhart. Uh, and he's just got a great pair of lungs in him. And he sings really, really cool, uh, gritty versions of old old standards. Uh, so he's going to be singing a few songs for me on this podcast as we go on. I'm just getting some collaborators, you know, that's how it works. And I'm trying to get some uh, some uh, people to back me up uh, because we're all struggling. Hey, I'm struggling. Um, I just bumped into a friend of mine, Colin McGlinchey, uh, just today. And tonight I was supposed to be gigging in the Stag's Head doing some stand-up. And I really missed doing the L stand-up. And it was just weird that I bumped into him today of all days. But I'm doing okay. I'm doing this podcast. And guys, if you're enjoying this podcast, uh, you can like, you can subscribe, you can leave a review. That helps. I've also got a Patreon page. Uh, If you want to go to that, there's lots of benefits. There's lots of extra content you can get. Uh, Hey, if you sign up at the lowest tier, you can become my close friend on Instagram and you get an insight into my world and you get to send me messages and whatever and, you know, just give me something to talk about. Interact with me. I'm eventually going to run out of things to say. I don't, nothing's going on. I'm stuck in a house. I can only see people from six feet away and everyone's scared. So if you want to do that, head over to Patreon, uh, look up Edwin Salmon of Knowledge and, you know, help me out if you can. Please, 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 if you can. So to sing us out, Brendan Blowhart, in honor of Disney's Lady and the Tramp, He's singing Frank Sinatra's The Lady is a Trap. Here we go. So long, Salmon Skins. Yeah. All right, how's everyone doing tonight, yeah? She gets too hungry for dinner at eight. She loves to eat her. And it never comes late She never bothers The people she hate That's why the lady is a tramp Doesn't like crap games With barons and earls Won't go to Harlem in Nerman and Pearls She won't dish the door to With the rest of the girls That's why the lady is a tramp She's a fucking tramp She loves the free Fresh wind in her hair Life without care She's broken, it's okay. Hates California, it's cold and it's damp. That's why the fucking lady is a tramp. Oh, yeah. She gets far too hungry to wait for dinner at date. She's got no patience, she adores the tea tear. However, doesn't get here late. She's always on time. She never bothers with anyone she'd hate. Why would you hang out with people you don't like? That's why the lady is a tramp. Yeah, she'll she'll have no dice games. No, with sharpies and frauds. You piece of shit won't go to Harlem. Driving Lincolns are Fords, she's got notions she won't dish the door. Oh, with the rest of the broad, she keeps her mouth shut. That's why the lady is a tramp. Oh, that's why that lady. 
she's a fucking tramp. When I asked her for a letter, she wouldn't give me a stamp. Hates California. It's so cold and so damp, but it's quite hot, so it makes no sense. That's why the lady. That's why the lady. That's why the lady is a tramp. Fucking tramp.